Mr. Mays? Present. Mr. Davis? Present. Mr. Guerra? Present. Ms. Fields? Present. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Present. Mr. Winfrey? Present. Ms. Galloway? Present. Mr. Griggs? Present. Ms. Worthy? Present. Thank you. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Yeah, Madam Chair. Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Mays? Yeah, Madam Chair, I want to do about an eight minute special order. There's a gentleman here who got this um these wild and weird things. And I wanna talk about that in about eight minutes presentation in the um anywhere in the special order set. Any other changes? Uh, I have a grant I want to talk about. Is it in grants? No. If we accept it and figure out how do we have a grant? That's why I want to know. Public comment before we start. Any other additional We can do referrals during council discussion. What was that? Any other changes or additions? So right now we have um, public comment for two minutes at the beginning. Point of order. Push up point of order. We have to vote on the changes to it then. I'm, I'm recapping Mr. Mayor oh, so that everybody knows. Um, so Mr. Guerra asked that public comment would happen first with two minutes for each the public. Uh, Mr. Mays has asked for the gentlemen that are here to be able to give a presentation for about eight minutes. And then Ms. Fields has asked that during um, the council comments, she would be given the opportunity to make referrals. Are there any other changes in our addition to that? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those that oppose, any abstentions. Um, is there anyone that would like to address the council? Anyone, any public speakers that would like to address the council? Ms. Galloway, my name is R. L. Mitchell, mm -hmm. and, I, and I reside on what, uh, 759 East London Avenue. Address these street lights over on uh, my street. Uh, it's two street lights be out at the bus stop for the last two years, and I want to be reimbursed for whatever uh, the grants come out for the situation on the street lights. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council during public comment? Hearing none, um, the next thing, um, maybe we can have the gentlemen do their presentation so that they don't have to wait around if you guys would like to introduce yourself. Sure, if you guys don't mind. My name is Parker. Um, for Scott, I'm here with Aetna Supply. This is uh, Tyler. He's a uh, Walmart manufacturing gurus for the census line that you can see with the, with the water meters. Uh, we know we don't have too much time, so we won't drag it out for you, but we put packets in front of you of uh, some literature that we'll be going over. Um, we're here to just talk to you today about some of the water, meter, water meters that we have sitting out. Um, we're going to discuss them. And I don't have a There's one additional one next to the third. That's okay. You can keep that one. You keep asking for it. No, I'll keep it private. Okay. You said you were with Aetna? Aetna Supply, yep, that's the logo right here. Okay. And I'm with Census Manufacturing, um, that's the package. And we met them up at the Michigan Municipal League. Right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I thought it was interesting. So you guys recently went to uh, RFP for water meters and everything like that to turn around to the city. Um, we're just coming here to present to you uh, census of water meters as well, uh, just to kind of show you a closer look and just basically go over a quick overview of everything you can do capability-wise and uh, answer all your questions if you may have any, um, and just kind of go from there. But I'll pass it over to Tyler. He's our... Uh, awesome. Thanks. Um, so, yes, my name is Tyler Tucker. I'm with Census Metering Manufacturing. Um, we are a, a global company. Um, we specialize in water, gas, and electric products. Um, and then basically a communication umbrella to read all that information. Um, what a lot of the industry is moving to now is what we call AMI reading capabilities. So that's advanced metering infrastructure. Okay, so what we're doing with that is instead of uh, meter readers working out into the field and collecting meter reads manually 
digitally or electronically um, on the footprint. Um, we're doing uh, basically RF studies where we can um, establish um, antennas around town that all of the rate, all of the meters will communicate via radio devices to those antennas, um, communicate data like uh, alarms, um, theft prevention. Uh, we can do communications to the meters. Uh, we can do uh, real-time data analytics. Like, you know, what's a customer's usage hour by hour, day by day, month by month, year by year. Um, so it's very important information, especially on your customer service side, um, for um, billing questions, with complaints, things like that. Um, we're able to give you that information um, at the touch of your fingertips instead of um, sending out workforce members um, to be able to do this. Um, you know, beyond that side of the network capabilities, um, we have some really interesting metering products, um, a couple of which you see on the table here. Um, one of which is our iPro product that we have uh, about 10, 10 million installed um, across the North America right now. Um, and what we're able to do with, with iPearl uh, is we're able to capture a really low flow amount of water. Um, because this meter has no moving parts, um, we're able to capture a much lower flow of water. Whereas a traditional meter that has a moving part in it um, collects water um, at about a quarter gallon per minute. Um, so if you think about a quarter gallon per minute, it's a small stream after your faucet. Um, whereas iPearl can capture water um, at three one hundredths of a gallon per minute. So we're capturing a, a starting the flow of capture much sooner than the traditional positive displacement meter. Um, the other large advantage to this meter is because it has no moving parts, we can guarantee its accuracy for a much longer period of time. So we guarantee the accuracy of the product in our iPearl, um, we guarantee that accuracy for 20 years. Whereas a traditional positive displacement meter only starts at five years, um, and then we have a repaired meter accuracy for the next 10. Um, but it actually requires physical change of, of a component of the meter. Um, so what this meter offers you is, is a product that you can put in and 20 years know that you're still getting the same revenue gains and revenue benefits as a new meter um, that you would from year one all the way through year 20. Um, so, it's a, so it's a really interesting product. Um, we've had this product out since 2010. Um, a lot of the communities around you are using this. Um, we have some of our AMI communities like uh, Genesee County, Grand Blanc, Grand Blanc Township. Um, Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of different features to this product. Um, this does have some depth protection protection um, alarm built into it as well. I know that's a concern in the city um, about water being uh, depth issue. So what this meter actually has is it has what's called an empty pipe alarm. Um, so if for some reason this meter was to be taken out of service and all the water would run out of it, um, it triggers an alarm that's sent via the communication system that says, hey, I was taken out of service for some reason, whether it was for repair, uh, whether a plumber was there doing work, whatever that situation may be, um, but it could also be for theft, um, somebody that wants to um, use water illegally, um, so that could be that then as well. Um, so we do have leak detection with this as well. Um, this meter, if it has consumption of water for 24 consecutive hours, it will trigger an internal <coughs> alarm that will be sent over the AMI system um, right here at City Hall or Public Works, wherever that may be. Um, and it can say, look, this customer has used water for 24 consecutive hours. In a typical residence, we like to see at least one point within a 24-hour period of no water consumption. So that's why we trigger it 24 hours. So definitely another added feature um, to the product. Um, we warranty the product for 20 years as well. So it's a 15 year full warranty and just a slightly five year prorated warranty after that. Um, with that product, we've now morphed into our, our second product that you see on the table here. A little beefier looking product. Um, that's our Ally product. So Ally um, derives its name from, it's your ally in the field. So what we've done with Ally is we've taken all the same technology that's offered in iPearl and we've added a three state full quartz ball valve. So over an AMI network, we can now remote disconnect water from your city hall, works, um, wherever you have access to the software, um, you can now remote disconnect those services um, for that application. Um, we have two, we have, I'm sorry, we have three main modes. Uh, we have open, closed, or reduced capacities. So open, fully open, closed, fully closed, and then in reduced capacity, uh, depending on your water pressure, um, the customer will receive anywhere from a quarter to three or a half a gallon per minute. So it's it's ultimately life sustaining water is what it is. Um, so if you don't want to completely shut off a, a, a customer service, um, you can put it in a reduced function. We're still measuring that water, um, but that customer can take medication, can fill baby formula, can flush toilets, things like that. General hygiene, um, but not the ability to take showers or wash dishes certain applications that we've all grown accustomed to with um, high water pressure. Um, so definitely another added feature um, that, we've, that we've dropped into that. Um, 
And as you can see, both of these products are composite. Um, so no lead, no brass, no copper, none of those things. Um, as the EPA is getting more strict on um, the products that we're able to put into the field, um, we've developed products now that are composite body, basically in the same family as PVC, that allows us to put these products in and be EPA or environmentally friendly. So those are, those are huge advantages for the utility. Um, you know, we, we've done some studies for the utility and we estimate, you know, four to five collection points around town will be all 35,000 units um, from, a, from one fixed collection point. Um, and we'll be putting that in a more detailed application into the RFP process um, that's just been released. Um, that response is due here in a couple of weeks. So, so just branching off what he's saying mm -hmm. in more layman's terms is, um, setting Flint up with a system like this turns it into what they call an innovative smart city. Um, so it's just an antenna that goes up somewhere and the signal actually can reach all of these water meters that are in everyone's residence. So it's nice because you get immediate responses if there is tampering with the meters, if it's been removed out of there, like he said with all those alarms, um, it backflow, anything like that. So if someone pulled it out and put it in backwards, you can catch it. Um, along with that, all that data is immediately transferred to the tower so you guys don't have to really send out the crew constantly to go out and manually read each one or do the drive-by units. It gets <coughs> translated right to the tower. Uh, the Ally one has that ball valve, which is really cool, so if there is any delinquent accounts or anything like that that are constantly missing payments, um, you have the ability for a click of a button from your seat to actually turn it off or put it in that reduced flow. Um, without having to send out a full crew or, you know, getting into that address or setting appointments to get into that address, which can be very time laboring and a long process to get that going. Um, <clears throat> it's really nice, too, because it's a little bit more advanced. It measures your pressure. It measures your temperature. So you could even scatter those throughout your actual municipality, throughout your city, and see what, how your pressure is at certain ends of the city, what the temperature is like. So uh, if there's cold pipes or if the pressure is a little higher than usual, uh, you're able to measure that as well. Um, okay. First of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Mays for inviting me here. Um, uh, this sounds very interesting. I was able to talk to them for a little bit before the meeting started. A couple of things they told me uh, I'm especially interested in. First of all, this on-off by technology. You don't have to send a crew out to turn it on and off. And I know we have an RFP out there, and I don't know if contained within the RFP um, is a requirement that anybody who's bidding on this has to be able to do this or if this is something different that they do that other companies don't do. I, I know the RFP has not been, uh, we don't have the deadline yet for the bids. But uh, have we done any type of uh, cost study about how much this could save us in labor costs? Then the chair to who? I'm sorry, uh, to Mr. Benzink, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, Madam Chair, if I can. Mm -hmm. So I did come in a couple minutes late, but I'm not quite sure what we're talking to a meter manufacturer for. We've already procured our meter manufacturer. It's been awarded. Um, we, we've already or made an order to them. So I guess I don't understand. They, they didn't, this particular uh, Aetna and or uh, Census didn't bid on the, the procurement. I'm totally confused then. So are we, though. So, well, but I guess I, I thought the RFP... To further expand on your question, the system we went with uh, has pretty much all the same features. You can turn it on and off, radio controlled? Well, we didn't, we didn't standardize on that, that particular meter. Um, I mean, it's, it's an option. I don't know that it's well served to, to have one of those in everybody's house. Uh, some There's customers that the city of Flint has that have been customers for 30 years that never missed a payment. You never actuate the, the on off valve one time. Well, okay, I'm not through with my questions then. But another thing that they had said that I was very interested in was even though, I don't know, somehow we've already chosen one, but I thought the RFP wasn't, the bid wasn't finished. I guess we'll get more information about that later, but they mentioned that it can record much lower flows of water than what we're using. And I believe that on our bills to everybody, okay, you have a minimum number of cons that you're charged for, no matter what. If you don't turn on your tap once, if you have an open account, 
you're charged for, and I think it's seven cons of water. That's not correct. No, you're put, you're, uh, if I can manage it. Please. You're um, charged a, a readiness to serve charge uh, that is, it's, it's not relevant to how much water or sewer you use. Um, so if you use one drop or more, that, that rate is flat. And that rate is? I believe it's $52 for a um, 5 h meter. Okay, well, that's too bad because I was hoping that we might be able to lower water bills to some people who don't use this kind of minimum amount, but I guess that's another issue. Thank you, Mr. Benzie. Mr. Benzie. Yeah, to try to clear up some of the questions about why is this relevant that they're here. Knowledge is power. And so they're here because when we went to the Michigan Municipal League and I seen and heard about it, I knew we were fixing to spend about 18 million on meters. And some people might buy a, um, a Buick LeFevre, some might buy a Cadillac. If I see something that I think is a Cadillac and a better product and not saying a LeFevre ain't, I'm going to show it off. I hadn't heard about being able to cut water on and off without going twisting the hole. That might be the new technology. Twisting and sticking something in the hole might be gone. That 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 captured my attention. Yes, particularly if we fit in the spin 18 million. And then I believe, and Rob, correct me if I'm wrong, I asked in one of the recent meetings, have all the water meter money been spent? And I thought on record the answer was no. We've got some extra money in that 18 million. Has it all been spent? Uh, it has not been spent. That's what I understood. So we did, we did uh, you guys did approve a $7 million um, rec, uh, requisite resolution for Badger Meter. Right. That's the vendor that we selected. And so what I wanted the council to know was as we continue to spend this money, and I've talked to these gentlemen, you might not get all of the same meters, but if there's some problem houses out there and we want that electric meter in the tower and mix it, I want us to know before we spend all the money because we don't be the one authorized to spend it. I want the council to know, regardless of who win a bid and who don't, it's up to us to stop or proceed it and interject, and that's the power and the politics we have. Um, I support the administration, the choices and recommendations, but the more knowledge I have, the better I can vote. And so I thank the council for the opportunity to let this technology and things be heard. I'm sure we'll have continuing dialogue as we try to vote to spend money, particularly as it relates to meters. And um, Madam Chair, that's all I'm going to say right now. Um, and I believe you guys actually went to uh, RFP speaking of count that four times at least, and we've been on every one. And the last one that you guys revised and went in was supposed to be just our resubmittal. So we've been work, trying to work with Flint for years. We got all the municipalities around Flint already set up. He's, he's, he's actually um, saying something that maybe Rob would need oh, to sorry. hear. Um, why don't you repeat what you said? Yeah, I was just asking Rob how many times it went. RFP was reposted throughout the period of the last three years because we we submitted to I want to say at least twice. I think it was I think it was done twice. Okay. There well, was we, uh, the, the, there was two we had to do it again knew, because we yes, had left out some we uh, language from the federal funding. Okay. okay. That's why we redid it this last time. So. And Madam Chair, she um asked for a back and then I'll get the back to you. Can you list somebody if I can? I wait. just had one question. Yeah, I can wait to. Is that okay? At the end, yeah. Okay, sir. So, uh, can I ask a quick question? Um, so Rob, are you familiar with them and their bid? Yeah. So Parker is our Aetna rep. So we use Aetna for all of our brass parts and some of our uh, other parts that we use to put water and sewer mains together. So do you have? Do, do you remember a bid that was submitted to them? Um, I mean, submitted. From well, they them. submitted on one of the prior uh, proposed when we did an RFP, but they, the last time they did not. So how can we get a copy of their the submission in which they were a part of? Was it for water meters as well? Yes, purchasing okay. should have it. Okay, purchasing should have it. Okay, so do I need to do a referral for that? 
Is it your referral? Yeah. And we're going to talk about referrals too. So thank you, Rob. Did you want to wrap up? And then I have Ms. Fields that wanted to say something, and then Mr. Yeah, Hayes. we could easily wrap up. Um, we just like to say thank you, um, okay. and we apologize for inconvenience. Yeah, absolutely. It was yeah. Maybe, um, you know, not uh, maybe an interruptiveness or anything like that. Obviously, um, well, we that was not our intention. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Right. right. Um, so yeah, just thank you for the time. We appreciate. Yeah, we appreciate you stepping with us. Yes. So we have Ms. Fields, and then we'll end with Mr. Mangum. Okay. Well, I just want to say I don't know. Uh, the relative uh, features or benefits of different water meters. Did we ever have Badger, who you say we gave contract to, uh, did they ever come and present on the features of their meters? No. Could we make a request that they do that? I'd like to see some kind of comparison, feature comparisons. Sure. We can have uh, Mr. Wright from, Mark Wright from uh, Badger come in. Yeah, I think you'll find they have very similar features. Um, these are two of the bigger uh, companies in the industry. I'm not sure what their market share is. He probably can tell you. Badger has about 30% of the market share. Very similar. Yeah, so they're, um, these are kind of two of the heavyweights in the industry. Okay. Well, if I can make that request to the chair for a special order next finance to have Badger come and do a short presentation. Mm -hmm. Mr. Major, you have something you want to say? Yeah, and, and when you listen close to the to some of the differences. Badger use cellular um, and, you know, sends us is FCC. And so their electronic, I call it bounce back signals, uh -huh. two different things. Right. And then um, when you use ultrasound versus electromagnetic, that's a difference. 10 year versus 20 year warranties, that's a difference. And then independent um, antenna to tower versus antenna to inside meter. That's what they've educated me on, as I said, and took notes. And so there's some features. I even like when people are sick or on medication, but they can turn it to a drip, so at least you can still take your medicine and do certain things while you try to get your life or finances back together. I'll probably be a drip or I'll be off. I'm trying to get back in track. I hope my income tax refund hit this week. Um, so I'm sensitive to customers with um, issues. But I, 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 I don't care what people think, whether it's after a bid or before a bid. I think Ms. Fields is right. We want to hear from Badger. We want to be able to compare the two. We don't always have time as a council to look at little details. But since it's a water meter issue, and since this is a federally funded emergency type, we get money. <laughs> Sometimes we should pause for the cause and learn details and comparisons as we vote an award contract. So I thank the council. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have nothing further. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate and I want to say one of the things that I think is interesting is when you look at um, our water fund, and what we're dealing with and the fact that roughly 49% of our um, billable water is not gaining any revenue for multiple reasons, whether it's theft, water theft, leakage, and so it is something that we can look at. Another thing, I'm going to go back on the um, video um, because I don't, rem I don't know if anybody else remembers, but I can remember when Mr. Benzik um, spoke about the badger, I remember saying, Something that you said, I can't remember the term that you use, but the term that you use caused me to be kind of worried about the longevity of it. And then you, you, when I said, you know what, Mr. Benzik, you're the DPW director, and you don't make me feel confident about the product that we're buying. And you, you, re, you, know, you step back and you say, well, it's not that I'm not saying that, it, they are, but I can remember specifically thinking that I wasn't confident about the money that we were spending. I remember the word. I right. What was the word? Crapshoot. Crapshoot. Okay. <laughs> and so, and so, but, but the point that I'm making is, 
I, I didn't feel that way just hearing this presentation only for the first time. I'm not saying that your product is, but I felt pretty confident about it. And so, but thank you guys so much. Absolutely. We appreciate your time, but Mr. President. Just briefly, you know, I listened to the presentation, and I'm, I'm interested to hear what Badger has to say, too. These two apparatuses seem to me, in my mind, that they would save on that, uh, I don't like to say mad power, I would say human power. <laughs> Uh, from going out, cutting things right. off, and hopefully that's what that's that's a unit that we're getting as well from the other group. Oh, another thing I forgot to add. I don't know if you just drop that in. Once you have the system set up, it's not just limited to your water utilities. You can actually eventually set up um, lighting through your city on the same system. You can do the gas meters. You can actually turn Flint into a very innovative, smart city. Um, we're just starting with the meters because that's such a sensitive topic in the public's eye. Um, but having our system over some competitors allows you to do multiple utilities under it. So you guys can control it all from your guys. And I just want to say, um, Mr. President, based on even what you said, our manpower is limited, which is why we can have people that come in and pay their water bill and pay for same day or next day service or turn back on, and they don't have the ability to get to them for about five days or so. And so it's very interesting. I'm glad that Mr. Mays um, brought you yeah, guys before yeah. us, and hopefully we'll be talking to you guys again. Just one quick question uh, for you, Mr. Benzik, again. Does the Badger have the meter, have the uh, ability to turn <coughs> on and off through technology without having to <coughs> literally send somebody out to turn water off? Yeah, they have, they have a very similar product to, to what they're talking about. It does so? You can remotely actuate it on and off. Okay, and and did nobody calculate what this could conceivably save the city in dollars? I, I didn't calculate it. Um, again, to be quite frank, I didn't think you guys would be open to that option. <laughs> so, are, are what we what we're getting and what we've signed a contract for it does have that option? We haven't signed a contract for it. We have a PO in place. Um, you guys passed a resolution, but the um, it's an option that they have. We did not select that particular meter because the price of it is more expensive. I'm sure Census will tell you that their remotely actuated meter costs more than their their regular meter. More technology. Yeah. So next week when they come, Rob, will you have them tell us what the difference of that is? I mean, because we still have more money left, right? We do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well. Are, are we obligated, now that we have a PO but we don't have a signed contract, <coughs> are we obligated now or can we change the decision on what company and or what meter? So, so, yeah, so, so the issue with procurement is it would have to go through a whole other procurement and then at that point, uh, most likely I would assume that all the same manufacturers have bid on it this time potentially census and Aetna would decide to bid on at that time, then it would have to go right back through the process and you know we'd have to start over essentially. But as far as the, the meter that goes, it would just be, if we wanted to go with all remote shutoff meters, which again, um, I don't believe is a good investment for every address, because like I said, there's customers out there who've been customers for this, in the city of Flint for decades, and we've never actuated a turnoff on them one time. I mean, that's that's the reality. You would never operate that remote uh, shutoff meter or valve in the meter once in the, in the whole time you've been here. So at that point, there wouldn't be any return on it. It would just be an investment that you wouldn't get any return on. Well, without some cost study that looked at how many of those people exist in the city out of the 27,000 customers we now have versus the rapid rate at which we're losing customers and are having to turn off water. I mean, I would have liked to have seen some type of cost effectiveness study on some of this versus manpower hours versus increased cost of a meter that has the automatic on off. I don't think we've been really given sufficient information. I didn't even know that we didn't have sufficient information. <laughs> to be, I mean, to be very frank with you guys, you didn't ask me, I don't, I don't think you asked me four questions about a $7 million resolution that I brought before you, and I'm being very honest with you. Can, can I just Fine. say something, Rob? What's your point of information? 
the reason we don't, <laughs> they didn't probably ask us, we so used to spending hundreds of millions, and so we don't really make pick, we just do stuff expertly and quickly. Thank you, I just um, and would you agree with me? No, sure. I have to turn um, and, it into and a Rob and, and and I'm sure you don't mean to, but sometimes you're condescending in your responses. I I can only speak about what these gentlemen, like Mr. May said, have opened my eyes. And so a lot of times the only information I going to say that I receive, I'm not going to speak for my colleagues, is what comes from the administration and or the vendor coming before us to share what they have. And so so there would be no reason for us to ask more information. Even the fact that they came to share knowledge with us, your very first thing was, I don't know why they're here, we've already done a procurement. When, if I'm not mistaken, the meters that we bought don't cover all of the meters that need to be replaced, but maybe they do. Did we order enough to replace all of the meters throughout the city? Yes. Okay. And so, uh, what? Uh, with the exception of our large diameter uh, meters that have been replaced recently. So, so the opportunity reason. to change and or make a different, go a different direction is out there. There, there may be some things that we have to look at. Is what I'm hearing you and Steve say. Yeah, you'd have to go back through the whole, you know, you have to rebid it. I'm just, I'm not saying that we are. What's your name? That also you have to be aware there's someone who's already been awarded that. So there's an impact on the person who's properly bid through the process too. So that's just another thing to keep into consideration because when you bid on something and you rely on it and it's been agreed by this council, there's, there's ramifications to that as well. Okay, maybe we can get a... Uh, Legal opinion. Well, you don't really need a legal oh, opinion because oh, the char the, oh, the purchase okay. the purchase uh, okay. procurement process is for itself. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Know? Um, yeah, my thought is this, without knowing all the details, um, when I hear it's more money to be spent, I don't know the details on have we ordered for every household, I don't know, the, but even if I hear what I hear, if there's more money to be spent, and I can do a pilot or try something with some meter somewhere throughout the city. You know, they're a big company. They ain't going to cry or whine probably if Flint don't do business with them, but I'm going to try to see if we can do something because I'm old school. I don't use emails. I ain't into high technology, but I'm going to predict after I'm dead and gone somewhere 20 years down the road, they're going to be cutting these things off remote. And I don't care if it's Badger, whoever it is, and we had a shot at it. I'm listening. I might even get stubborn and want to rebid everything because I ain't tripping. If we get an opportunity to spend $18 million on meters and I want to learn and see, then hey, haste sometimes make waste. Now, I'm not this moment at this time advocating rebid because I don't know enough. But all this was was an exercise in information, and that's been a good one for me. Um, thanks to the Michigan Municipal <laughs> League again, Ms. Brown, I don't like to go to that stuff, and I'm here to tell you when Mr. Donnie really forced us to go, it left a sour taste in my mouth. So I got to get over this spirit. But that's where I met him at the Michigan Municipal. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm a big av advocate of technology replaces people. And we can't get around it. It's here. And it's going to continually grow. And it, it advances quickly. But I would say this with the new meters. I think Mr. Benzik did the right choice for the simple fact we got champagne wishes with beer money. This city ain't got a lot of money, especially the residents on the down line. We've got to be careful of the latest and the greatest of Mac is, they say, way better than PC. And you want certain things, but the, the end game is the residents are struggling with their water bills as we speak. And they need relief. Now, ain't nothing wrong with the meters being accurate, but if it's measured to the last drop and they're crying about bills, and it could go either up or it might even bring it down. But we got to be make sure you factor in how the resident gonna feel on this investment because all that glitter is not gold. It might make money, but it may not balance toward the customer. And they're already crying about 
everybody uses it politically and everything, the water rates, the water bills. So I'm saying, I think Mr. Benzik did it absolutely right. We have to kind of meet in the middle. The ladies and like Mr. May, this going to happen. Technology going technology to advance. But we got to sometimes just take it slow and gradually make that transition. And I yield the flow back. I can leave my card with you guys if you have any questions or anything. So we are on 190141. That is a um, special order that I requested about the no cost contract changes. <coughs> um, is there somebody here that. Um, Are you, are you able to answer that, or do you have somebody that's here to answer the question? No, I can start to answer it. Really, the, um, What's this questions? it's the, uh, it's no, it's no cost. Mr. Whit, Mr. Um, Woodson, at the last committee meeting, shared that the contract with, um, I don't know if it was Lane, one of them, their, the contract expired on the 31st, and Mr. Benzik said um, it didn't have an expiration, and then when it was pulled up, it actually did have an expiration, but there was a no-cost contract change mm -hmm. that gave them more addresses, I guess, mm -hmm. because there it was change. The time. Well, if it changed the time, when I asked the question, you said they had completed everything that they were supposed to do. There was still a million dollars or so left over, and they were given more addresses. And I specifically said, so was it because there were dollars left and you responded, no, it was because there was more work that needed to be done, which made sense, but it still seemed as though this change could be done without any council approval, even though it was a million dollars saved based on their contract. And so that's why I'm trying to understand. And so when, when Mr. Woodson asked about the extension, you said no, it wasn't, and he pulled up the document and showed that it was, and under the reason it said no cost contract change. Do you, are you are you aware of what I'm okay? And so I just want to understand how that works because to me it could seem like a way to not have to get counsel and or follow some of the guidelines that we have. And that's why I was under trying to ask where this no contract provision is and how who implements it, why, and so I can, I'm not excited, but I can't really answer that specifically unless I'm looking directly at the document. So I, I really would need to look at those, and I can certainly do those. Um, but what I can tell you is, with regard to the purchasing ordinance, um, like I said, the on the operation side, like I said, we do the contracts, we compare those. However, on the resolution side, that's where the council approves a resolution. Sometimes the resolution has, um, and sometimes they have a specific end date, and sometimes they do not, depending on the type of resolution that it is. And in addition to that, it has the amount. Um, the actual uh, procurement ordinance has a provision in there that talks about the review and modification of a contract, and those are things that, um, pursuant to the actual uh, procurement process go through the city attorney's office. Let me just grab it. Um, so I, 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 I want to make sure um, it, it's clear that it's not a circumvention. Like I said, if there was a increase in the contract price um, beyond the threshold of the $75,000, then that would be something that would need to come back here. But if you already previously approved the contract for X millions, however the amount is, let's just uh, keep it simple that it's over that threshold and you're adding on, say, a $75 and $1, and you're 
extending it beyond what was approved by the body and, and what's required by the ordinance, then that would be something that would need to be brought back. But if you're simply continuing on in the same work that you're already doing, there's really nothing here for you to approve. So uh, Angela, can I give you an, an example and then you can um, hopefully implement yeah, it sorry. into your answer if that's yeah. okay. Okay, so let's just say um, I hire a contract to do some work for me. And they tell me that they're going to do this work and they're gonna have it done by this date and it's gonna cost me $5 million. Well, they get the work done, they finish in on the timeline that they said, mm -hmm. and I actually save a million dollars. Right? I'm listening. Okay. And so with that, it seems like I should be the benefactor of that savings, and then I should have the ability to decide how that million dollars is spent, right? And so the reason why I say that is when, when Rob was explaining that there was an extension, he said they completed the work, the scope of their bid, <coughs> and when they completed their work, it left a million dollars left. They, they, they still had a million dollars that they hadn't spent. And so, and, I, and please understand, I'm just trying to wrap my mind around it. It seemed like the city in essence, saved a million dollars in that scope of work. And so if the city saved a million dollars, it seems like we should have the ability not just to extend their contract without some sort of approval because of the dollar amount, but it seems like we should be able to say, hey, we saved enough money, and now we should have more things that are bid out or um, and so I want you to kind of understand, I may not be thinking about it right, but that's the way that I perceived it in my mind. That's why I was wanted to get some help with trying to understand it. Yeah, and I think like I said, there's, there's probably a lot more moving parts than you, than you probably realize. To, that's to just, that. I'm just going strictly yeah, yeah, yeah. by what but, Rob said. But what I'm saying is that we're kind of doing this about the actual documentation, and I, and I, can, I can make projections, but like Angela, I said, Angela, I reached out to Rob on Friday in preparation for this. And so this is not just tonight. I did it in an effort to make sure that we didn't get here. And so if we need I to spend more- I wasn't involved with it. I'm sorry that I wasn't included on any- of I didn't know you needed to be. He no, said no, no, that I'm, he I'm would- not, I'm, I'm, I'm just not saying that. I'm just speaking. Well, I just want you to know that I'm not giving this today, that I actually did try to do plenty I'm, of time I'm not before. saying anything about you, your okay. ability, anything. I'm just simply okay. speaking about it. This is not anything against you, this is me having a conversation with you okay. about what you're saying, and I'm trying okay. to, to help to understand Okay. It. I've kind of forgotten a little bit of what okay. you were saying now. Unless somebody has something else to say about it, I'm willing to um, let you guys move on to your other special orders. I just want my colleagues to know that I reached out to Rob on Friday. He shared that someone from the purchasing department that would have the ability to answer these questions would hopefully be here. And so that was on Friday, today is Wednesday, because I didn't want to have to take up you all's time. I wanted to be able to ask a simple question and get a simple answer. And so I never intended to take this much time on it. I was hoping that there would be an easy summation. And so I shared my ideology around it. If we save a million dollars, there should be some input. And so that was just me. Unless somebody else has, you can finish if you want. And I, I'm just going to just give you the tidbit of the law on this, which is the procurement policy. So I just, like I said, want to just give you something that you can take a look at that it actually guides us on what to do. And I think that's always important that we, we have something to look at. So just so you, as I said, I don't want to be labeled this any, any further anyhow. Um, but I have to talk to you about it one-on-one. -on -one. I know you have my number. Um, but Section 18-21.11 deals with contracts. They talk about um, what the city attorney's obligation is with regard to that and with regard to modifications. Also, I would just say also, and that's on page 16 of the policy because the pages are numbered. And also, if you go back to um, page 12, um, which talks about the approval threshold. So those are a couple of guiding principles with regard to that. So I uh, suggest so to give you that information. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. So um, 190015, special order status of the water fund. A special order is requested by Councilwoman Fields to discuss the status 
of the city's water fund. Point of information. What's your point of information? Did you leave that special order on that you just had with no I didn't. Um, we're, we're making a, 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 a I, I've just been asked in an effort to keep our special orders clean that um, it can be removed and, and I'll bring it up again before the time it can be Unless someone else wanted it. I just, um, I would Okay, Madam Chair. Yes, um, I need to ask, is there anybody here from finance yeah. that can address? Can I hear my name? <laughs> yes. Ms. Lewis, there is a special order um, that I have requested, a status of the water fund. We know the water fund is projected activity to be in a deficit at the end of 1819. And could you... Tell us what the current status of the waterfront is. The waterfront is. Um, I cannot. Um, whatever it was, the last time Huey projected or met with you, or I don't know if he provided some kind of report other than the budget. Um, and it just depends on how much money we get in from uh, bills, and that changes every month. Okay, Mr. Branch. Um, thank you, Ms. Lewis. Madam Chair, through you to Mr. Branch. Yes. I, I, I don't know what we're going to do about this, but uh, I think we need more detailed answers. And you're aware that the last budget to actual that Mr. Newsom gave us was from February 2019. And we should have had, by this meeting, the budget to actual for um, March as well as the quarterly budget amendments report as required by charter. So uh, I'm going to make this request that we see those um, by the next finance committee meeting. Wh whoever can do that. And then maybe the status of the water fund uh, will be answered by then. Meanwhile, until we can get that, I would suggest we drop this and it can be brought up again with a special order. Yeah, um, we might have an opportunity in the um, water department coming up in the budget. 26. Um, is that the what, 25th? 26. The 26th, what day is that on next Friday. week? Let's see if we can get some of that information maybe by the end as well. Are those dates of gold, Steve? I know the you ones said those yes. ones too. Yeah. Okay. Because, Ms. Manager, we yes. do a, a, a two-year projected budget. Correct. And I want to see this, um, what it looks like as it relates to the water fund as well. And so I'll be looking forward to that coming along with the budget. <laughs> We should know what's projected for the next two years. What year do you, Madam Chair, to Ms. Fields, is she saying that's projected to be a deficit? 2018-19 in the last, in the budget to actuals that uh, Mr. Newsom gave us in February through 2019, it showed a projected deficit, overall deficit, in 2018-19, so that's the so end that, of June. That would be at the end of this fiscal year in June. So I want to know, um, is that projection still alive? And I want to know what the projection for the two budget years we doing now look like when um, the water folks come before us maybe next week. If if you need more time, then we would be back to finance committee meeting. But I think we better take a closer look at that as well. Actually, I changed my mind. I, I think since I've made this specific referral request, and hopefully we can have that by the next finance, I think we should leave that special order on for next finance committee. Because that's a pretty important issue. Okay. So, where are you going to Okay. Uh, Mr. Lewis, since we have a planned deficit 
on our water and sewer fund at the end of this budget cycle, does that mean we're going to have to go up on water rates to our customers? What do you mean planned deficits? Well, we were just talking about it. There's going to be a deficit. It's been planned at the end of this budget cycle, about June or so next year. What of information? What's your point of information, Mr. Mays? I think, wouldn't it be fair to call it projected to Mr. Griffin, and it might not I'll be projected. Able, you know, not planned, but okay. projected. Yeah. That's so, my question. Uh, since we are projecting to have a budget deficit the end of June next year, will this require, in the water and sewer funds, is this going to require an increase in our water rates to customers, to our residents? Well, at this point, I would say no. I don't know. I was not um, prepared to give any kind of status on the water fund today. Um, the only thing I was aware of was the resolutions that were on the agenda. Um, and I would say if there is a projected deficit, then we would do everything that we can to fix the deficit. I would not, you know, the first course of action would not be to raise rates. Okay, thank you. So we are on, um, and just for the record, does, um, does, Steve, do you guys get our agendas so that you see on there what, not only yeah. the resolutions, but what the special orders are? The agenda came yesterday afternoon. So you guys only got it yesterday afternoon? That's correct. So I, Janelle, do I, they not get it when we get it? I got it today. Okay. And then they Okay. So can we at least send it to Steve? Because That's I mean up to the clerk. I mean, why 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 wouldn't we be sharing it with them when they're much of the information that we need is supplied by them? Is that something that we can look at doing? We can talk about it. That would be good. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't get it until right break. One nine zero zero eight four. Um I had are we at point Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, one nine zero zero four five. We're at point. Yes, Madam Chair. On that masterpiece schedule, now that Mr. Newsom is on, I want to ask a question out loud, particularly to Steve. Steve, do you remember us um, having a verbal agreement why this masterpiece schedule is on there? Because we kind of verbally said, even though we had passed it at some time, we'll talk about it. You remember those tech conversations? No, exactly. Okay, I do remember. Anybody at the table remember them tech conversations as it relates to the masterpiece schedule? We voted and passed it, but Mr. Newsom agreed that when we get ready to go into it, we could. Y'all remember that? So we remember. That happened, <laughs> Mr. Brown. And so. I would ask that this be postponed again for another two weeks. I don't want to go into those details at this time. Okay, Mr. So the next one is um, you can order that you word without Oh, objection. yeah, without objection, please. Chanel. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, Madam so, Chair. Yes, Mr. Mays. On 190084. I would ask that that be postponed for two weeks and not end up going away. But for right now, I'd ask that it be postponed for two weeks. I think we rescheduled a hearing for May the 6th. So I would ask that that be postponed for two weeks. All right. So postponed without objection. Um, 190102. Yeah. A4? Did I? No. Yeah, no, he just said he wanted to go to two. Oh, so we're on 190102. If there's no objection. So, um, Madam Chair, as to 190102, or I gotta say this once a meeting, uh, Madam Alleged Chair, because I still think I'm the chair. But anyway, according to the rules, <laughs> we'll get there. Gary, you can laugh if you want to. I know what I'm doing. Um, one nine zero one zero two. That's um. I requested to meet and talk with Roe. Is anybody from Roe here? Okay, I would ask that that stay on. But before I move away from it, I want to say I was cussing and fussing loud, real loud yesterday. And I thank you, somebody in this room, Clara Hurst, I told that she could quote me. 
Um, when I read this article about W.T. Stevenson and Michigan Monk, I was tripping. I get calls from Ohio, Texas, um, everywhere, and I ain't recruited nobody for no water. Um, <coughs> what you call it? Them filters kind of got calls from NASA. But when people come, I meet them and I treat them nice. That's the man right there. Bill Lester introduced me to. Uh, Buck. And then, uh, you know, I think when I first met Buck, man, um, uh, they came here back. I know Row Engineering had a no bid contract. And early on, before contracts was given out, they ran into some problems and deal them with their expertise. They went over there and helped them get through some situations because if you don't believe, I know the beginning to the end. Look over here at this side of the roof. Mr. Woodson there, I think, what street was that? Alma Roof. They did one of the first pipes. I knew they couldn't keep up when they did that first pipe, but they got all the publicity for doing the pipe replacement. I was tripping. But anyway, that was the beginning. The row engineering, a no-bid contract. VO brought Michigan Monkey in. I met him. Anybody I meet, I'll introduce to the mayor and them, give them. So when I read that, I was tripping because I said, man, they got me in the middle of an article about somebody allegedly selling some dope and multi-million dollar contracts. I'm not going to be in nothing like Kwame them or go to jail. I don't want that appearance. So I buck against people, even the media, who portray me. I said, now, as much as I answer the phone, but I was cussing. I said, as much as I answer the phone, why not call and ask me to comment? And so I looked at that and I read it. So I'm going to ask that this be postponed for two weeks. But I'm really telling you, I hate to see black folks or white folks in the paper arguing and suing. And we'll see how it all turn out. I say this seems like some black on black contract arguing crime. And, and I don't like it. And so we'll see how it all turn out. I come to find out, they say, Monk had sued W.T. Stevenson, and then W.T. Stevenson countersued on defamation. And I'm calling him, talking about, y'all need to cut this argument mess out and move on. So we'll see what happens, but I had to speak about that because my view of what I read and what the public read, because my phone went to ring it, um, I have to speak on it as we move forward. And I don't know the intent of the media, but I know I learned something yesterday, girl, when you talk about what's at the top of the story and what's down at the lower part. I wouldn't care if it's the top, lower part, in the middle. They were talking about selling drugs. I'm like, what they doing, cocaine, heroin? Is it weed that's legal? I don't know. But I didn't like the story. I didn't like the headlines, and particularly if we're doing a fine job with Fast Start and you mix Mays and the mayor, and I'm going to take up for Mays and the mayor too. So I would ask that road be postponed. It wasn't actually on point, Miss Fields, but I used this time to do it. I'd ask it to be postponed for two weeks. Thank you. Um, without objection. Uh, 190150. Yeah. Yes, Yes. Okay, uh, hopefully council is aware that according to our city charter, city council controls the city's audit. We hire the auditors, uh, hire, compensate, fire them, whatever. Uh, section 3-404 in your city charter. Well, our auditors currently are Yo and Yo, and they are under contract through 2019, but it normally takes about a year to go through an RFP process for auditors for the upcoming years. So uh, I wanted to draw council's attention to this and also make a request that perhaps the city clerk, Ms. Brown, could pull together some documents for us about past RFPs so we can look at the RFPs that we've been put out in the past so we can prepare for and get an RFP out um, 
to choose our auditors for 2020 onwards. And just so you know, before we are we are working on that, Mr. President and I, um, along with um, the administration, um, on this very thing. So, Great. Mm -hmm. And the clerk yes, is involved. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And this so might and this, right. and this might not be quite on point, but this is a RFP about city auditors for 2020. And I know when I was again at the Michigan Municipal League, I talked to auditors in accounting firm, and I don't know was it Plant Moran or whatever, but. Like, look at our finance department right now. Huey Newsom left. Well, Don still left first. Huey Newsom left. And okay. left before Don. Beg your pardon? I left before Don. Beg your pardon? I left, left before Don. Yeah. Well, I ain't going back that far. I'm, I'm young. I ain't, well, I ain't that old. I don't know all the history of Tom Dibble. No, I'm just kidding. You did. And so my position is this. When you see this much transition, and you really got a vested interest for your city and for the finance department and you attend the Michigan Municipal League, you find out that these auditors offer type of services where they can come in and provide interim service. And so I don't know had we looked at that, but I would show feel comfortable because remember I had put a motion to try to do some type of agreement where Don and Huey could, you know, talk on the phone to Tamar or whoever, but I want to raise the issue because I'm going to sleep well at night, particularly if I find out I was still funny. But my position is this, i got to push for the city to be covered. So, um, Steve, Mr. Gilchrist, all people in the room, I want it known, Angela, that I'm saying on record, in a timely manner, if they need help in finance department, reach out to them accounting firms because if I ain't mistaken and my brain ain't playing a trick on me, they told me they can come in the finance departments and help. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. Uh, any other discussion on that? Wonderful. So we are all... Not that you need help, but just in oh. case. Every department needs help. Yeah. So resolution, Ms. Uh Regarding resolution 190123, um, a request to be made, the only thing we have in our agenda packet is a one-page resolution, a lease agreement. There is no date. Wait a minute. Wait. Can I ask a question? And I'm an asset of this council. Because at one point, there was a concern that discussion should not be begin before something was decided on the re resolution. Are we saying that that's not the case today, Ms. I Fields? Agreed with that. I'm willing to make a motion. I would like to uh, table indefinitely resolution 190123. And when I say indefinitely, I'll explain, if I may. Is there support for a table indefinitely? I'll Ms. That. It's been moved and supported. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Fields. Okay, the reason I'm saying indefinitely is we get these resolutions. This is a lease agreement between Flint and Zero Mass Water. The lease agreement does not have a date, a timeline for the lease. It doesn't have an amount of money. It doesn't say what it does or what it's for. How can council be expected to make decisions on things that we have zero information on? And I mean zero. Only information. Wait, wait, wait. What's, oh. your, oh, what's your point of view? Uh, I vote. Didn't they say, these people say that it was not going to cost Clint any money at all, anywhere at all through this project? Do you remember that? Okay, so... Um, yeah, I, maybe, maybe you can short circuit this because, I, again, we all want the same thing. And well, the last meeting that we were here yeah. for, we asked for an adjournment because we were still working on the language. Well, we're still working on the language, so I came here to ask for an adjournment because we're still working on this. And we were getting at a very good point where we should have something, of course, well in advance of the next committee meeting. So I, I would ask. Um, to the, yes, because like I said, we want to give you 
complete information. So, and that's and that's been the intention. The intention. And that was the intention last time when we asked for the adjournment. Okay. And now I can tell you, we sh we will have some before it next time. So I'll offer a substitute motion to postpone this to the next finance committee. At which time we'll have a lease agreement. What's your point of information? Can you call an amended motion? Can you amend or substitute? Let's say amendment versus substitute is my point of information that she was in the Yes, I'm willing to use the word again. I'll amend my motion to state that this should be postponed to the next finance committee where a lease agreement will be presented. Thank you. I'll second that. Is there any discussion, Mr. May? Well, I'm amending the motion. We don't know um, if a lease agreement will be ready. I can support the motion. I see the intent of it. But um, if a lease agreement ain't ready yet, I don't think we're going to get bent out of shape. So I can support the motion as it's worded, but I'll wait to see what comes forward with the lease agreement. I know the intent of it. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of postponing to the next finance meeting say aye. Aye. Those that oppose, any abstentions? It is postponed. Mr. Garrett. Let's make a motion that we approve 190. Uh, actually, make a motion that we extend to council 190 142, 190 144, 190 145, 190 146, 190 147, and 190 145. Um, I have a question about 190142. Um, you, Madam Chair, Mr. Branch. Is this, these purchases, these four Ford vans, is this in the current budget? Were these budgeted for? Yes, they're in the feet garage budget. They were definitely. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, in regards to the same van one, are those four vans coming out of the 18 that we supposedly no, these are so completely separate, <coughs> but they're for the police department? Yes. Do you know eight? what the intended use of those vans are for? Well, I, can't, I can't see my glasses are off. <laughs> well, they, they use those uh, vans to help the police bring um, anyway. I didn't say that the term. Anyway. So we're getting four of those? Yes. They're, you know, they, they're also used evidence. Some of the vans are evidence vans. Okay. Yes. I just, just, just from being over there, I know that that's why the CSI is something that they're old. Yeah, they only use like one. Okay. Uh, and then while we're on that subject, since if we, if we could consider maybe a recommendation to plead, um, if you talk to him the rules, his name, do you want to oversee this? Yes. Okay, if you, and when, because uh, I was told that you have some of those cruisers, we might have to come back because there was a bidding issue or something that like that. That was 20 cruisers that we passed Eight, last yeah, week. No, staggered ones. it was 20. 18 was fleet vehicles. There was 20 cruisers earlier on that, that we did approve from council. Uh, they did have an issue with the lease agreement. But, um, the one provider only wanted to provide five at that cost. So we did find another uh, financer to finance the other 15. And those are going to have to come in front of us again? Or? No. no because it's been okay. Mm -hmm. And then, so it's kind of my recommendation to kind of keep in mind for future. Um, if we are to get more, I don't know. If, I wouldn't be opposed, and I think many of them wouldn't be opposed if we have to go to maybe sometimes chargers for the patrol vehicles because they might be cheaper. Uh, for the officers to drive, because they're not driving around since we're getting a paddy wagon or whatever they would describe it. You'd, you'd have to take that up with the chief. Uh, that's just my recommendation there. And in regards to the other, I think it's 190157, um, which is the um, Department of Justice. Is that mainly for the Intelligence Center? That is for the Intelligence Center. That is a grant that we receive from the Department of Justice for. Um, uh, enhancements and improvements, and also fund a person for the intelligence center. Well, so fund personnel yes. as well. Okay. Awesome, thank you. That's all my questions. I'm looking forward to those. Miss, Mr. Green. Uh, I've got a question on 190-147. I don't know if anybody can 
Yeah. Uh, Suzanne is here. This is Park Commons. Oh, oh, okay. Do you know what the soil was tested down? What depth it was tested down to? Um, I do not have the actual depth that it was tested to. I'm not aware of that. That was part of the environmental um, assessment that was done, and I don't have that information in front of me. I can get it for you, though. Uh, yeah, because they're talking about removing the top 18 to 24 inches, and uh, surely they did a test. They did. The phase one environmental assessment, I just don't have the exact depth in front of me. Okay. The remediation plan actually um, defines what, uh, what um, depth the fill dirt needs to be replaced, and so they're recommending 18 to 24 yeah. inches. So that's based upon the test from the soil. I just don't have that in front of me right now. Okay, so you could have that information by what? On no Monday. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't have a question. Uh, of which, Mr. Mays. Let me yield to her and then if you can come back to me. Yeah. Um, for you, Madam Chair, to uh, Ms. Um, Wilkhouse, I was wondering, okay, this, this uh, resolution right here is for that area right there at Wood and Saginaw? Correct. The old building that they, the old, old warehouse? It's actually right within there. the footprint of the phase one construction, which um, that building is not technically in the footprint, but there's other sections of that site that are. Right. So, yeah, right. so this is not specifically for the building because that's not part of the original footprint. Okay, okay. So this is for the next area at Williams and Sagno. This is actually for the construction site. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So what are they going to do with that area right here at Wood and Sagno? Um, that was actually part of a demolition and so it supports the redevelopment, but it is not proposed for actual housing construction at okay. this time. Okay, I was just wondering. Yeah, it's 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 it, it supports it, the demolition did, but it's not actually proposed for new construction. Okay. And I do want to talk about the demolition in the immediate area. Yep. Because I've been getting questions from constituents. Yeah, that's um, demolition is definitely a part of the process, and I'm happy okay. to discuss that further with you. Okay. Um, but that that's not what this is for. Okay. I'll talk. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Madam Chair, I'm looking at this Flint Holding Facility Operation 190144, and I say not to exceed, beg your pardon. Mr. Mays, um, are you, can we separate that one? It needs to have an, um, I mean, it wasn't separated. No. If you want it separated, I, I'll separate it at your request and talk about it later. I would ask that 190144 be separated. That was a request that she'll talk about. Um, let me say this, too. Um, the 1, 2, 3, we already separated and postponed. And so the other one, the... Uh, Community Foundation grant is that the community could plan to represent facilitate at the bottom of that grant acceptance. Uh, um, is that you know, something to do with you? Can you can can she explain us, Madam Chair, about one nine zero one four six? Yes. Sir. So please say your name. My name is Jamaica Patrick Singleton. And this particular grant is um, regarding the Flint Resident Driven Recovery Plan. And so this project will provide a stipend for residents who facilitate community sessions um, to obtain information from other residents um, about what they would like to see in a recovery plan. And so the, the project will actually support providing the stipends as well as supplies that are needed to facilitate the sessions. What type of stipend? So Do we know yet. Well, yeah, it was written into the grant. So the grant was written where there will be sixty stipends provided to residents, and each stipend will be one hundred dollars. Can the councilman get a stipend? We'll see. But anyway, 
I just wanted to know when will that program start after we pass it? Do we know? Yeah, well, we're, we're, the committee has been talking, and we're actually going to do a train. We're planning our first training for um, residents on the 9th of May. Yeah, I probably will not, for the record, seek out a site, and I hope the residents can benefit our support it, but I just want to hear a little more detail about it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Right. Uh, Mr. Gary, you want to in, in, in regards on the, uh, the one you said okay. Okay. Is there any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor of moving the resolution to the council chair. Aye. Any other opposed? Any So, the, Mr. Mays, the 1901-44 the dollar amount is not correct. <coughs> the dollar amount should be two million six forty eight one fifty two. So it's a difference of forty thousand dollars. And if you want, Miss, so I would, I would move to um, send that. I mean, we can do it on the floor with a point one now. But I'd rather <laughs> what you want to send the special pass. So I would move that um, one. Let me get the right number. One nine zero one four four. Uh, be moved to special affairs. There's a motion. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Can I? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Miss Wheeler. Yeah, I just wanted to explain that the increase in the price is to cover maintenance fees for the jail. Uh, so it's the same contract, um, same schedule, except we have an increase for any maintenance fees to be covered of forty thousand dollars. Madam Chair, then I haven't read this background. I haven't read my packet. So, do anybody know is this the same program, uh, Mr. Gary? You see how, if I made through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Gary, you see how he was asking about that police stuff. This guy might end up being a uh, a, a big police person. I don't know. Yeah, I think he said he would chair. But my question is this: Is this? Um, facility still being paid for the same way it was. I think at one point the state was, then they act like they was going to stop. So it's still the same. This ain't no money we contributed. We just own the facility and we enter into lease agreement, that type of thing with the parties, with the county and whoever the funding is now. There's no changes there. Right, that's correct. Same okay. funding source. Yeah. I can support it, but I can support it after it's mm -hmm. fixed that special affair. I'll be voting to move it to special affair. Mr. Gerald. Yeah, so uh, in regards to that, I know I think it was the last budget cycle through you, um, Madam Chair, Chief, whoever, um, plus the Chief was saying maybe moving towards the city of Flint taking over that. Uh, city lockup because of how much we were paying to outsource it. Um, I don't know if you've heard anything from that, if they've had any discussions, so I just wanted to uh, make a referral um, in regards to that motion to the police department to see if they're still looking into that. I would just like to tell Mr. Guerrero that uh, the city has tried this back and forth several ways, and every time the city runs it, it's a disaster, financially and otherwise. So I would urge you to talk to different people, law enforcement people in the community, other than just the police department, to get a feel for the problems that we had previously when the city actually ran the lockup. Okay. I had a question. Um, I did reach out to Chief Johnson and Chief Burnbitter in an effort to get my questions answered. Um, maybe when when it gets to special affairs, I just want to understand because in when I read through the contract, it said something about contingent upon county receiving a waiver. Yeah, and, and I thought I think something else too. And so that that that's what I would like clarity on when we get to hopefully before I'll get that answer before um, there was a contingent upon it's in the notes in the on the blurb that's on the agenda. <coughs> it says note 
the city of Flint Police Department, and then below that it says what it's good to Yeah, and there was something else too, and, and, and I had it written down on my little document in case they called me, and so I'll get those things answered, but I was just wondering, is this the way that we've been doing it, or did we change it and now we're trying to go back to something? No, it's, it's exactly the same, exactly okay. the same contract, okay. um, exact same terms. Okay. And like I said, we don't pay anything, but if, if in the event the funder no longer has the resources, then like I said, then there's no liability on the city. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor of moving this to special affairs, say aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Could you Mr. Mays? I'd like to move yeah. discussion yeah. items in all outstanding discussion yeah. items. I would move that they be postponed yeah. for two weeks unless there's any separation. Yes. In council discussion, I'm going to make some additional referrals, but I'd like to tell uh, Mr. Branch, Mr. Branch, yes. since you are the city administrator, this is just the finance agenda, and I counted quickly. I have at least 28 referrals going back to 2017 that were to various departments in the city government that I've never gotten a response on. And that's just the referrals that are here in the finance committee. I'm going to once again put this in an Excel spreadsheet and send this to you, although I've done it before and some of those these same items were on that spreadsheet I sent you before, I still have not gotten a response to. So have you checked your email? I do check my emails. Okay. Um, Send me your list. I will do so. Any further discussion? I just want to say the only thing that I um, want to um, ask is 180055. Okay. Um, that's from February the 12th of 2018, mm -hmm. where Ms. Wilcox said that she would provide the email from HUD. I, I just want that. I'm going to drop it from this agenda and ask that um, that be done. Um, if I need to do a, um, what do they call it, a Freedom of Information Act, um, I will. I, I don't want to do that. Um, one eight zero zero five five page 6 at the very bottom. Um, and I think there was one more, you guys. Give me one second. That um, Ms. Um, Lewis, if you could take notice of page 11. 180529 referral revenue to turn on and turn off water services. Um, and there was supposed to be a water study that was done back in 2017 when we were um, going to the Gliwa contract. If you could just um, maybe come prepared to um, give us information at the time. There was a discussion as to whether there, it was necessary for a $75 shutoff and a and 100 and, I don't know, how much was it, Mr. May, Ms. Worthy? Yes. To turn on and turn off. Remember you guys were, were considering whether that, that was necessary for them to experience both of them. And, and when we were talking about that, we wanted to find out exactly how much revenue turn ons and turn offs was generating before we really dove into, and I think, um, as you guys can see, that's been on there since October 3rd of 18. So maybe if we could do that. 75 to turn on and 75 to turn off. Yeah, and, and the question was, could one of those possibly be removed? And we didn't want to make sure we did anything until we looked at what kind of revenue was generated specifically from those um, two pots of money. And then there was one, I'm trying to find it, um, about... I'm sure there's also a, a, a request by Council Person Fields about a 180204. I don't know if this should be incorporated into that same discussion item or not. Oh, I think it's probably good. Yeah, you're right. Um, I'm sorry, I have one more that we haven't discussed. It was um, Ms. Wilcox. 
180474 on page 9 at the very bottom. Um, um, I'll, I'll, um, just, I'll postpone these, but in the next meeting I do want to talk about um, the, the planning person that took Ms. Wilcox's position. I don't know if that person is still in place or not, but according to Ms. Wilcox's contract, should anything happen with her um, position as an appointee, she goes directly back to that position. And so I want to know what kind of implications that would have on the department if there's resources to accommodate two of the same positions. And so that one's been on there since September 5th of 18. And so those will be two that um, I definitely will be looking forward to discussing. Nothing for Mr. May? Yeah, Madam Chair, I want to separate um, something that's going to allow me to address this um, invoice I'm hearing about. I've seen a relevant um, item, so I'm going to separate on page 10. I'm going to separate. <laughs> okay, I'm going to separate one eight zero five one two on page ten in order to try to achieve my goal. There's a variety of conversations on here all throughout about turn off and turn on. And I would say this, even though I might not separate those, I had a conversation with um, one of the mayor's uh, folks, I think, this past week. And I understood from talking to um, somebody in the water department, it might have been, um, who is the treasurer? Amanda. And I'm thinking that we turn wild off policy-wise between 8 and 4, they say they're working on regular time, and they shut water off. At one point, I heard then they shut it on from 4 to 6 on overtime. I ain't tripping about the straight time and overtime. What I'm tripping about is this. If I close my eyes and think about it, as long as the water meter is running, we making money. Now, uh, yeah, people might not be paying it. The shutoff maybe get people in here to pay. But the problem I got is this. Why, when people come in here and pay three, four, five hundred dollars, it's taking them three to five days in some cases to get cut off. Now, I'm, I'm delinquent. I'm behind. I could be cut off. But if I go out and hustle and scrap up and beg and borrow three, four hundred dollars to get cut back home, I don't want to wait five days. Not with my grandkids, dad, my son, them. That could be a mess for me or for anybody. So think about it. The quicker you get back on, the quicker that meter gets to run. So my position is this. I would like to see when we shut off and they come in and pay, we ain't telling them to wait three or five days because we can cut on everything that needs to be cut on, and if we don't cut off to the next day, it's still going to get cut off. And we had water running on both ends. So I'm concerned about the way we do shut on and shut off. So I don't want to enact no ordinance of policy, but I will. And so I'm just saying it out loud because I can't tell people what to do, but I can introduce ordinances and direct people what to do. And that one, I'm this close because I'm tired of folks calling me. Councilman Mays, I just paid three, four, five hundred, and they say it's going to take the next Tuesday, and it'd be Wednesday or something. That means they got to go have one lady go to the hotel. So we got to do better. We can cut them on quicker, I think, Tamar, if we just think about it. We using all that time to cut off. They going to get cut off. But you're only cutting on 20 a day when you could cut on 40. Just clear the cutback ohms once they paid in, go back to shutting off. 
And I would put that in ordinance if we can't get some flexibility. And so that's what I would say to that. I vote to postpone them. But there's so much stuff in here that if we really get into it one day, I wouldn't care if we had a special meeting. This is where the ball game is at. Um, so forth and so on. I want to say this and make a referral out loud. Listen to me. I'm away because I want to finance and everybody to hear this. But I don't want to really interrupt you all because everybody's business is important. My position is this. Huey Newsom knew about $775,000 to pay off them estimated bills, which is on here. I ain't gonna separate. Who in the city now is negotiating and talking with the state on that 775,000? See, we made a deal when we decided to stay with Detroit for 30 years. And it was for 775,000 to take care of some estimated bills, people's bills, 3,000, 6,000. I'm like, they ain't gonna pay that, they're not introduced the ordinance that you can't go back past six months now. I'm proud of it. So we got people with three and six thousand dollar bills. They ain't cut off because we agreed. They froze. They still froze. But we looking at seven hundred and seventy five thousand that's been agreed upon and when Huey left it was like we only need a hundred and seventy some thousand to um, pay off them, and can we use the other 500 or so thousand to do something else? We say we'll talk about that, but I don't want the ball dropped in his transition because I want to clear them estimated bills up, and I'm going to vote to postpone it and leave that on, but it was some talk going on with somebody from the state about 700 and some thousand, and I'm willing Before to... Before or after the new governor? It was a year before. Before, okay. before after yeah, what? Before after the new governor. Oh yeah, this was in the new governor. This was agreed upon when we voted to stay with Detroit for the next thirty years. We voted on a board seat on the Great Lakes Wild Authority that we waiting to compensate, I mean, you know, consummate a board seat on Great Lakes and 775,000 to take care of some estimated delinquent bills. Those are the two caveats that, even though they seem petty, it wasn't but five to four on the vote. And I know what I agreed to. So that's what they were. They were prior to the new governor, back during the period, whatever year it November was. November 17, just for the record, November 17. <coughs> but this verbal agreement seemed to be hiding, but we know where it's at. We keep records. We was in closed federal negotiations. Thank you. Ms. Worthy. people from the state that wanted to combine that 700,000 plus thousand that he's talking about with, uh, what's that other phone? The RAP. With the RAP program. Right. That those two were separate. Mm -hmm. And so as we, as we get back into that discussion, uh, that 700 plus thousand that Council Mays is talking about was not a part of the RAP. We didn't, we, we didn't even discuss it. That wasn't even a part of the discussion. It was a separate. From two years ago? Yeah. Well, I need to talk to well it's been ongoing. Huey yeah. was working. So, yeah, you're saying two years ago, but Huey was still working on it oh, okay. to clarify. Right. It was, yeah, it okay. wasn't just yeah. So, um, Thank you. Mr. Are you all set, Mr. Winfrey? I'm almost all set. Yes, Okay. Um, Ms. Worthy. Uh, 
through you to um, Mr. Binzik. I thought that we hired another company to help with the shutoffs and turnoffs. No, that contract's expired. Uh, are we going to mm -hmm. do that again? Because if it's taken five days to turn on water, that's a long time. I'm not sure it's taken five days. I can tell you some constituents' names and dates and times. And so, Rob, I'm sorry, you guys. Rob, even when you say things like that, it's like you, 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 you act as though we might be telling you something that is not true. We get calls from constituents every day that pay same day shut off amount and are told that their same day money that they're paying is this is Monday. I had somebody for Thanksgiving that couldn't get their water turned on. They paid it on Monday and it wasn't going to happen till. And so all I'm asking Rob from you is to not be condescending to us. This is real life stuff to the people that we speak to. We have no reason to come before the administration or anybody in the public and tell anything that's untrue. And there's a consistent coming from each of us that is saying the same thing. And we don't have any reason to collaborate. This is real life stuff and it's happening. And Amanda will tell you, I tell my constituents, I know they're saying next week, but if you call between 8 and 8.15 and you hopefully get an opportunity, there are five slots, five. Only five. And when I tell you by 8.05, they are gone. And so I'm saying that from my heart, Rob. I don't know if you have a heart for this community. I don't know if you believe these people are struggling. But sometimes your response makes me feel as though you don't. And so just something to so, think so about. Councilman Galloway, you continue to call me condescending. I'm saying that's but how I But I know feels. for a fact that we take more than five same-day turnouts. Well, you okay. might want to tell them. I also know for a that. fact that not everybody always tells the truth when they call. That's a fact. Right. I, I didn't just start doing this. Thank you, Rob. You had the floor still. Are you done? But yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take it. But this is real life stuff that's happening. And by 8.05, those slots are gone. Mr. That's Davis. not true. Thank you. Thank well, you, Madam Chair. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to sound condescending. I know I'm in a neighborhood that I get cut off every day. I don't know who I get lucky enough to call. Beverly used to work in the water department, my wife. And um, we tend to get very lucky. And then you're absolutely right, right, Rob. A lot of times people do lie. Because when I question them right, I find out they contradict themselves. But um, it is ways you can get cut on. I didn't never find out a number. And I get high volumes of cut off and cut back on. And it seemed that at the end of the day, they water. Ironically, be able to cut back on within sometimes say within 24 hours, sometimes say before the end of the day, the last route you will be put back on, and they will cut off the same day. So it depends on the attitude, and people do lie. Whether it be uh, restoration, they lie, and you'll catch them in lies with dumping and everything else. But but what I'm saying is this. You have to be careful with the residents because some of the same people that get cut off be always getting cu consistently cut off, you know. That's why I had an eyebrow raised with that meeting. Some people don't try to do nothing. They just chase the bill, and they pay on it or pay it instead of paying their bill. And I tell every constituent of mine, make sure you pay your water bill and your taxes. That's the first thing out of my mouth. You should not play with that. And I'm done. I yield for it. Just in response to that, there are some that they pay this bill instead of that bill. They're just making it. Like, I've been there. I, I'm not trying to say, but just in response, it's not maybe, maybe some go, just don't pay their bills. I get it. Um, but there are others that are, they're fixed income. They, they can't afford it every month. But I did want to see if we can get, like, a special order. Uh, I don't know if Amanda's still doing, because she's like got promoted to treasury, mm -hmm. but she's still ahead of the water department too? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So can we have her come in maybe mm -hmm. and explain what's going on? Because it's been a while since we've heard from her. So a special order with Amanda to update us. One information. Uh, Want Amanda be in the budget here? Yeah, but normally no, you already really... conversation for budgets. Yeah. You already did so the treasury too. 
You already did treasury. This is specifically oh, not budget wise, anywhere. but just, yeah. Yeah. just the top. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, and any questions we might have. <clears throat> and I just want to say for the record, to me it's not about whether or not people lie. If I pay money to get my water turned on that day, and I'm talking about when I talk to Amanda, you guys. I'm not talking about talking to my constituents. I realize that sometimes constituents don't give you all information. But I'm talking about when Amanda says it is not in our ability always to get everybody turned on in the same day. What I'm saying is if I pay $100, $75 to get my water turned on the same day and it doesn't happen, there is a concern, whether that's a lot of people or a few people. And so just just for that. So, Mr. Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. And also, constituents might need to understand if they pay online, it's a delay. I found that to be true. So you don't get cut right back on. You have to wait until the city see it or whatever. Because I pay online. And a lot of people do pay online. Okay. I don't think they let you pay online. You I pay online, online all the time. Every no, bill I have. No. Not when you're behind. When you're behind. When you cut off and let you yeah. You had something? I just wanted to um, mm -hmm. speak to what he was saying. There is a little disclaimer on the website, too, about... Uh, you know, there being a delay if you pay online and you're shut off. So, um, and, and I, I just wanted to say too that everybody is right. There are some people who are lying. Right. There are some people who it's taking it, um, <clears throat> an extraordinary amount of time to get them back on. And so, you know, you guys like sound like you're arguing, but nobody's wrong. And so it depends on the volume. And this is something that I'm currently looking at in the administration. So it, this is not the first discussion. And that's what I, I didn't mean to be. No, you're good. Um, I was just saying, here goes the discussion again. Right. Um, so it, this discussion is going on outside of here and that um, trying to work on figuring out how to be more consistent. Okay. Um, so this is a postponement for the next two weeks? All in favor, say aye. 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 Those that oppose. And so, so it's it postponed. So, but, um, okay, so Janelle didn't have who supported sending 190144 to special affairs. No, I did not hear a motion or support. Oh. If, if there was one, I apologize to Mr. May. to send that other one to special affairs. Yes. Okay. Yes, thank you guys. I was. So, so now we're Miss Fields at the wow, park chair. All right. What's your point of order? Yeah, separation. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, separate zero, five, five one, one two, two, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Madam Chair, through you to the guys from the super. Um, I want the finance committee to hear from this guy. What's your name? Can you still be here for me? I want you to introduce yourself. I'm Brandon with Super Construction. What's your name? Brandon. You want to say that? Mr. Mays, before we, before we do that, because we voted on changes, so can you share what he, his relevancy is? Yeah, I separated 180512. If you look at the substance of 180512, it's to discuss lead line replacements, including hydro vacuum excavation, restoration, and whatever. And um, even though Rob is here, this is a representative from one of the contractors, and I want to discuss the details of these um, I'm going to call it a change order. Which contractor is he with? This is Super. Right, but which, you said he's with one of the contractors. Which contractor? Super. Super construction. That's the name of it. Councilman Mays, I understand that. This specifically talks about A.E. Convoyette, Miss, Mechanics, Ms. and Ms. You want to get technical, I Damn. separated it for that. Well, I'm going to appeal your ruling if you're trying to say I can't hear from this man. What is your point of delaying this and getting technical? I know what I'm doing. It's a discussion item to discuss certain things about um, lead replacement lines. Yes, sir. So get technical and see what, how it goes. Mr. Mays, all I'm asking you is... I've that answered it. He's from Super. This is about lead but service But you haven't lines. shared the scope of what he's doing. I'm going to let him do that. Well, no. I, as the chair, I have Madam a right Chair, to decide. what the hell are you talking oh, about? Goodness. 
I got the right to request to hear from him just as I got the right to request to hear from Rob Benzik and anybody else. I don't have to share it first. I done tried to tell you, if you listen, he got a change order. He's from Super. You asked three times, what company? What are you getting at? Let me calm down and see where you're headed. You starting to delay? The meeting was going fine. Let me be quiet. Councilman What's Mayor, going on? at the beginning of the meeting, we agreed on additions and changes to the agenda. Madam Chair, which let me ask this include. question. You don't have to. The agenda includes discussion items. It does. I just separated a discussion item. You did, but Mr. We don't have Mayor, to change the amend the agenda to discuss Discussion item. I am going to give something. him five minutes to make uh, his presentation. Are we going to see what the council do? Oh, well, Let's have that him well wait a minute. What are we waiting for? I'm going to tell you. And I'm going to put order. Oh, this is ridiculous. Oh, this meeting was What's going your point fine. Of order? Abuse of the power of the chair. Oh, You're absolutely out of order because it's a nine body member and everything must be done by a vote. You ain't going to dictate. If we don't have uh -huh. discussion item, we're going to discuss it. And you tripping again. I knew you couldn't go a whole meeting right. <laughs> so are we going to be quiet and just let and set and wait for her? I'm tripping. And you were. I'm going to read it. Yeah, you can, you can sit at the table. I'm going to read the... Um, uh, yeah, you can while Mr. Davis change the rules if you don't like the way they're written. Let's hear what the rules Thank you. According to council rules, yes. number 13 at the bottom, council members may request to ask questions of administrative staff, etc. During debate on any agenda item, guest speaker time allowed shall be determined by the presiding chair and is not considered to be a part of the limited debate allotted to council members. What's your point? It's not a debate. It's not a motion. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't listen to anything that I read, Mr. We Davis. Heard. No, you don't, because it says that the time that this person speaks is not included. And just so you know, point whenever we discuss, what is your point of information? Are we in the five-minute rule on right. discussion item, Ms. Galloway? That's on a right. motion. Councilman isn't? Mays, I'm going to answer that. And and Mr. Um, Davis, I'm sure you've been reading Robert's rules because yes. we talked about it. A debate in Robert's rules is any discussion item. That It is. And so the point is this. The chair determines... Um, how long a speaker is point allowed to speak? What is your point Isn't of information? Isn't that under the resolution section? It's the only section that talks about the. Is chair. it under the resolution it section? It is. This ain't a resolution. Councilman Mays. It's a discussion. I, it does matter, Ms. Galloway. You wasting Council time. Council members may request to ask question of administrative staff, This et ain't administrative staff. This et is a contract. Et okay. Et but it, we ain't on a resolution, Council Ms. Galloway. Mays. You ain't no lawyer. You reading it out of context. This is a discussion item. Councilman Mays. This is. It's a distance yeah. like when we had the people from here Council with the Mays, water. How many times do you think this gentleman should be I don't seen? know, but no, all we know, know is we could no, be no, done no, if no. you wasn't talking. No, I don't think so. Well, I yes. do. Thank what you, you wasting this that long time? I'm about to cut. Right. This is ridiculous. We could have been done. Council, you can go ahead. But I am going to be. I'm just so you know, I will be timing you. But you can go ahead and speak. Yes, Mr. Yes, wow. Um, point of order. What's your point of order? You know what? You are being very rude. And I know that's in the rules somewhere. You don't have to talk to people like that. Councilwoman Galloway, okay. you really don't. What's your point Now, of you're order? talking about Rob is being condescending. Right. Listen at you. You're being very condescending right now. I'm sure that's your opinion, but I'm not. I'm yeah, it is my opinion, and I'm, I'm not exercising, And I appreciate that, but I'm exercising order yeah. in our meeting. Sir, you have the floor. I'm bringing the super construction to be the change orders. The copies being like keep passing around. I give you the dollar amount that we uh, originally went for our base by bid, and then the amount that we went over to you on the third. Are you going to get rid of this? No. <laughs> 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 I'm going to 
Brandon, did you say your name was? Brandon Beatrice. Now, Madam Chair, Madam Chair, point of order, Madam Chair, point of order. What's your point of order? Can I proceed with this discussion out of me? And the chair act like a chair and let us, you waving your hand at me? That's what you just did, wave your hand at me, I see you. And the camera see you. So you keep waving your hand at me, I'm losing respect for you. I'm gonna appeal you, I'm gonna talk about you. You, is, that's bad. You treating us, you talking about Rob Benzik being condescending? Point of order, point of order. Miss, 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 Miss Galloway is abusing the chair and I appeal the way you acting in this meeting. I'm appealing your actions on the way you can. I just did. Y'all have to second. Y'all let this foolishness go. I'm trying not to call her that. Y'all letting this foolishness go. The administration said. I would get ain't they turn. I got the flow. They can have. Man, look, Miss Galloway, Miss Galloway. I'm trying to discuss my discussion item. May I proceed? May I proceed with the flow? You can. Okay, then be quiet. Be, you ain't got to tell me nothing when I got the flow. I'm trying to proceed. It's my God, too. He's my God, too. He's everybody's God. He ain't just your God. Oh, my God. I simply wanted the Miss Galloway, why is you proceeding and you ain't got the flow? Point of order. You out of order. And I appeal the ruling of the chair. You don't run everybody's conversation. You don't speak for us. We got discussions that we separate. It's ours. It ain't yours. A change order is not in Man, man this is my discussion item. We ain't got to that yet. I done invited a speaker. I'm tired of your mess. Technically, I'm going to ask that this be moved to special affairs. I so move this to special affairs. I'm trying to. Say and then going to move it to council under somebody else's chairmanship. <laughs> yeah, I've moved it to special affairs. I second that. I second that. Oh, I'm sorry. You the chair. You don't know what the hell you doing. Is there, is he, oh, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of moving this to where? Special affairs. Say aye. 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 Those that oppose, nay. Any abstentions? So we're so going to I'm going to continue if you give me the go flow ahead. and shut the hell up. Mr. Mays, you better watch Now you better watch yourself. You being You better watch yourself. You not been the uh, talk. You talking about Rob Benzik talking condescending. It's you. It. It's you. It's you. And you going to stop it. If you want to let break. I wouldn't care what happened. I'm concentrating on you now. Okay. You would mess up a, what we used to say. This meeting was going fine. You ain't finna be a dictator. You ain't an emergency manager. You're acting foolish. And every time you do it, it's gonna flare up. I've seen the of information. Well, it ain't good. Now, I got the flow. You ain't finna hop in and take the flow from me. Point of information back, Mr. Garrett. And you can leave. We can break up from a quorum. It ain't so funny that I'm elected and can have a flow. I don't care what you want to hear. This is my discussion item. I don't get in yours talking about who we want to hear. You don't want to hear from me. You wish I wasn't elected. The way it sounds, you and Galloway, uh, you think it's funny? ta ha he he it ain't no taha hee hee. This meeting is adjourned for a lack of a quorum.
support that, but at the same time, I think I know what we're doing, and I, I might not support it on second thought, because that ain't the only reason to suspend the rules. And you need six. If the, if my allies vote no, that would be Jerry Winfrey and Maurice Davis. You ain't gonna suspend them, and we gonna proceed with legislative. So all that talk about I'm willing to do this, I'm willing to do that, but ain't willing to do this and do that when we do it. You think you can get six? I hope you don't. I'll be voting no not to suspend them because y'all done played with that suspension way too long. You did suspend them when you removed me. And, you, and that means I'm technically the chair. So that's what we gonna do. We ain't gonna suspend them now because y'all should have suspend them when y'all broke them talking about you taking away my one year term. Now you want to suspend them for something y'all, the fabulous five, want to do. I'm not stuck. I'm in discussion on the motion. Point of order. Why are you interrupting me? Okay, I'm going to appeal the ruling of the chair. You interrupted me when I'm about to wrap them up. I didn't rule on anything, so I'm not going to accept an appeal. There's no reason for me to appeal anything. Well, you couldn't have chaos throughout. Y'all get up and leave again. You gonna accept our appeal of the ruling of the chair, and you ain't gonna interrupt. Okay, then what you gonna do next? I'm gonna continue. You're not gonna continue. We in an appeal. There is no appeal. Oh, it is a motion and a second. You just a chair. Who you think you talking to? Members can appeal, and we did. And you going to honor it, Mr. or we is going to be I'm ruling, you I'm ruling you out of order first. And that's your first warning. You're going to honor these appeals. That's your first warning. Who you think you is, Monica Galloway? Madam Chair. Uh, I ain't said you. At this point in time, I'm going to leave. And I'm going to leave because Good this is evolved again. Good into just chaos. Y'all. It's just an excuse. Point of order. She's out of order. She's out of order. She, with an appeal of the ruling of the chair on the floor. Okay, well, we'll sit and argue about it for three hours. We say it is. I got both steps. Well, get your butt up and go. Because it ain't going to, you're not going to ignore no appeal. You're not going to ignore no appeal. I had the flow, I made it, he seconded. Mr. And you ain't going to tell us you ain't going to honor no appeal. Who do you I, think I, you I, is, God? Uh, Donnie O'Reilly? It ain't going to happen that way under my watch. You got chaos when you don't follow the rules. Now that's my name, I'm Councilman May. Um, whatever you and like he Councilman call. Davis. I will call you out of order. Call 911, 211. You out of order. We got an appeal of the ruling of the chair on the floor. And you going to tell us you're not going to honor an appeal? Who do you think you are? I wouldn't care who you call. I wouldn't care who you call. We'll take a rest. We don't care who you call. You don't tell us you ain't going to honor an appeal of the ruling of the chair. You out of order. This is Eva Worthing. We are currently. I wouldn't care if you're Eva Worthing, Eva Worthing, or Eva Curry. Oh, now that's going to be on schedule. It's going to be the front page. Because I know she ain't going to dictate no appeal. You, you done watch Monica too long. I'm going to teach you a hard lesson. I'm going to teach you a hard lesson. You think you can ignore council members just because you're a chair? You out of order. Yeah, I mean, I ain't studying. You, 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 you filing the wrong I mean, certain Oh, that's what's going to happen. I ain't studying. They think they'll let these chairs go there if they ain't going to honor no appeal. You got to be a foolish and an alcohol. And properly second. What's he asking for not? What's she? You come to council meeting every day to call the police on me because I know the rules and you don't. No. You sound like a fool. He was properly second. My son. And the bill of the ruling is always the question about what she ain't going to do. Okay, so we might as well just do your could have been gone. Alright, so uh watch this. It's over. It's over.